In this module, we'll take a look at the important concept of properties. Properties are the parameters you use to configure how each asset, collection, scene, and even the experience itself should look and behave. Let's walk through each category. We'll start with asset properties. To view an asset's properties, select the asset you care about and then open the properties panel. As you'll discover, some properties in the Properties panel are common across most assets, while other properties are asset-specific. The common properties are so common, in fact, that I think it's best to spend a couple of minutes reviewing them. Starting at the top, we can change the number of the asset or the media assigned to it. Then, there are the assets X and Y coordinates, which specify the number of pixels from the upper left-hand corner of the canvas to the asset's center point. Note that as I move my asset in the canvas, the corresponding X and Y values change in response. Then we have W for width and H for height. If I resize my image, you can see these properties changing at the same time. And that little angle symbol represents the rotational orientation of the asset. Moving down, note the three property categories, each represented by its own tab. There are the appearance properties, which will change the look of the asset. Then the container behavior properties, which configure the asset container independent of its content. And finally, the tools properties, which control asset associated tools like drawing tools. First, the appearance properties, defining how your asset will look. The fill behavior is specific to images and videos. Use it to specify the, how the content should be displayed within its container. The default value, fit, forces the entire image or video to be visible. If the content and the container have different aspect ratios, the container would end up with some empty white space. Below fill behavior are some visual effects, such as the ability to change the opacity of an asset. If visual effects are meant to be permanent, we suggest making the changes outside Interface in a product like Photoshop. By limiting Interface visual effects to those times you want to change value on the fly, you reduce the amount of system resources consumed by Interface. Moving on, the next tab contains Container Behavior Properties, controlling how the container of the asset should behave. See the property named Container? Keep an eye on this one. An asset's default value for this property is static, which means it will not be interactive in your running experience. If you want your audience to be able to manipulate an asset, be sure to set the container property to pinned or free. Free means just that. The asset is fully interactive. Pinned asset can be toggled between static and free. Then we have the Tools Properties tab. What you'll find here are parameters controlling two interface features. One is the sharing tool, which is used to save on-screen media for use outside of Interface. We'll discuss this topic on another module. The other is for the drawing tools, which enables users to draw directly on the screen. For example, if I turn on the drawing tool and then enter play mode, I can annotate my image. Okay. That addresses the list of common asset properties. Now let's talk a bit about properties that can be unique to each asset type. Of course, we're not going to go through all of them here, so I encourage you to check out our Help Center for all the options and details. Up till now, we've been looking at an image asset's properties. Let's now check out a video. Did you notice that a fourth property category has appeared in the Properties panel? This new Behavior Properties tab contains parameters only relevant to videos. For example, here, you can turn on autoplay, set whether the video should loop or not, and more. You'll discover that other types of assets also have a Behaviors tab, each comprised of properties unique to the asset type. Summing it all up, Interface assets possess a wealth of properties enable you to fully constrain and configure each one. And guess what? All of these properties can be used as a trigger source and changed as the result of an action. Be sure to check out the Triggers and Actions module to see how this works. You'll be amazed. OK, now what about collection properties? The good news is they function just as you've seen for assets, enabling you to control how a given collection looks and behaves. You'll even find similarly named property categories, appearance, behavior, and container behavior. 
What you won't find are nearly as many properties held in common. Each collection is fairly unique. Well, one thing in common. The properties panel for all collection contains a style dropdown, enabling you to change the collection type. Let's say I've been using an asset grid in my experience, but I want to change it to a carousel. Well, instead of creating a brand new collection from scratch, I can just open the properties panel for my asset grid and change the collection style to a carousel. Pretty easy. Of course, I can easily switch back to the asset grid or change the collection to some other style. Last but not least, there are scene and experience properties. Here, you can configure interesting things like the background, startup scenes, keyboard style, and other characteristics that affect your project as a whole. To access these properties, select the appropriate node in the Scene Structure panel and then open the Properties panel. The Experience node is always at the topmost node in the Scene Structure panel. Meanwhile, the Scene node is always the node with the white rectangle. I'll leave it to you to play around with these properties. As always, remember that everything you want to know is heavily documented in our online Help Center.